Salutations, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another video. The time is finally here. We have hit the preparation season for fantasy football, and I am going to kick it off with a top 10 off-season value jump. After one of the craziest off-seasons of all time, the landscape for many players has shifted significantly heading into 2022. I wanted to take a look at the players who I believe had the best changes in situation and whose outlook has skyrocketed because of it going into next year. But before we get into that, I would greatly appreciate a like and a subscribe. I cannot thank you guys enough for the support that I've already received to my current subscribers. Shout out to you because I could not do this without you. And if you are not a subscriber yet, join us. We love the company. With that done, let's get into this version of Hot Off The Press. I'll be going from 10 to 1, ending with the player that I think saw the most significant boost in value, and I'm going to start the video off by quick hitting 5 who had improvements of their surroundings but just missed the cut. We'll start with my honorable mentions in Tua, Tagovailoa, and honestly guys, this is pretty simple. You add Tyree Kill and an improved offensive line and a slew of running backs too. Tua is set up for success for the first time in his professional career. Zach Wilson is another quarterback that I really like, and even after swinging and missing on that Tyreek Hill trade, the Jets went with option two and got Wilson plenty of help in April. An elite wideout option in Garrett Wilson and the draft's best running back prospect in Brees Hall. They are pretty solid consolation prizes if you ask me. To Cleveland next, and I am looking at both Nick Chubb and Amari Cooper. These two guys would certainly be on the list if we knew what happens with Deshaun Watson in 2022. However, we do not know what that's looking like yet, so for now they just remain higher upside options, depending on when or if a suspension comes and for how long. I am also excited about Russell Gage, and even though Matt Ryan is no slouch, anytime you swap quarterbacks to Tom Brady, you are winning. Chris Godwin is looking doubtful to start the year, meaning plenty of targets early on in the season for Russell Gage. If he and Tom Terrific can get on the same page early, he could carve out a season-long role in an offense that is destined to put up a lot of points. To Indianapolis, and the last mention before I get to my top 10, it's Michael Pittman. Now you guys know that I am not a big Carson Wentz supporter, but in addition to the upgrade to Matt Ryan, Pittman saw no significant competition added out wide. He will have a hefty target share and should increase an already solid efficiency from 2021. Now to the top 10, and the first player I'll cover is Leonard Fournette, who saw his biggest competition leave in free agency. And while the Bucks did draft Rachad White in the third round, I am not overly concerned about it. White is likely going to be used to help keep Fournette fresh. While he may steal some third down work and a few passes as well, this is still Lenny's backfield. And after a toward finish in 2021, Fournette is primed to see plenty of touches for Tampa. He has earned the trust of the coaching staff. And even better, at least for him, with Godwin likely to miss time, look for the Bucks to lean on Leonard even more early in the season. Fournette has a shot to repeat his RB7 performance, and in this offense, an improvement is not out of the question. James Conner is in at number 9, and similar to Fournette, Conner saw his biggest competition leave the team. With Chase Edmonds gone, it is the James Conner show in Arizona. The Cardinals did bring in Darrell Williams from KC, but money talks and Zona gave James a lot of money. He will have to improve his efficiency from last season and the touchdowns are certain to regress. But after a top five finish, a step back was basically inevitable. No nuke for six games means even more work for Connor and he's shown that the bell cow roll means production. We stay in Arizona for number eight and it is Hollywood Brown. And instead of having to worry about Rashad Bateman supplanting Hollywood in 2022, 
Brown is certain to be overtaken as the number one option in his offense by Nuke Hopkins. He should be more than happy about it. Brown not only gets the number one role all to himself over the first six weeks of the season, but he moves from an extremely run-heavy offense to one of the more pass-happy attacks in the league. That early season work is going to be invaluable in building a rapport with Kyler Murray, who he should pair up nicely with. Brown is going to have a massive target share until Hopkins comes back and will then benefit greatly from Nuke pulling coverage. He can take advantage of lesser corners and truly could break out for Arizona after recording his first 1,000 yard season last year. At 7, it is Allen Robinson who went from the dumpster fire in Chicago to the penthouse in LA. Now that is a really good start, but it gets even better. Justin Fields gives way to Matthew Stafford, and Robert Woods is now in Tennessee. Odell Beckham, he is yet to resign with the Rams, laying the number two spot in a high octane passing attack right in Robinson's lap. Now, the 2021 numbers are absolutely brutal, I am not gonna lie. But between 2019 and 2020, A-Rob compiled nearly 2,400 yards, and he also scored 13 times. He is still just 28 years old, and he no longer has Matt Nagy's comical game plans to worry about. Instead, Sean McVay's genius finds the best way to utilize Robinson in 2022, and I would not be surprised to see a resurgence in his game. It is entirely possible that Robinson is back to his old self and cruises past 1,000 yards for the Rams. He has legit top 15 upside with defenses worrying about Cooper Cup. I have a pair of players in for you at number six. It is Juju Smith-Schuster and Travis Kelsey. And are we noticing a trend here? With Tyreek Hill gone, someone has to make up for those targets. These two are easily the best bet in an average wide receiver room in Kansas City. Now, Juju has not been the same since 2018, but playing with one of the game's best quarterbacks has a way of transforming your game. We know what Travis Kelsey is, but with an even larger slice of the pie, he could reclaim the number one overall tight end spot that he lost last year to Mark Andrews. Both of these guys are going to be force fed the ball, and I am certain that at least Kelsey continues to dominate. Juju may not have to take the number one role outright to have a successful year, but he'll have the first shot at doing so. The Chiefs are not going to just stop scoring all of a sudden, and between the two, I think 15 touchdowns is the floor. We get our first quarterback in at number five, and it is Jalen Hurts. And when you get a top receiver added to your squad as a quarterback, it is always a win. Well, you were potentially on the hot seat, and the team makes that type of commitment, it is even sweeter. The Eagles went all in on Hurts' development in 2022, giving him all the pieces to succeed. The trade for AJ Brown gives the Eagles two top 25 graded wideouts according to PFF from 2021. They also drafted one of the top ranked centers in the second round in Cam Jurgens to bolster the projection up front. Brown has elite yard after the catch ability excellent body control and ball skills and a nose for the end zone. He will elevate this offense. Hertz is going to have no excuses and he should not need them with the arsenal that he now has at his disposal. After a top 10 finish last year, he has top 5 upside if he can stay healthy and improve in the accuracy department. In at number 4, I have another pair for you in Jerry Judy and Cortland Sutton. Judy and Sutton must feel like they won the lottery. After being stuck with subpar play at the most important position in all of sports, the duo inherited a future Hall of Famer. They lost that old QB issue and they saw targets free up all in one go. That trade could not have gone better for them. Russell Wilson is the single biggest upgrade at any position in the league in 2022. He is going to get Judy or Sutton into the top 25 at the position and it is possible that both of them end up there when all is said and done. The Broncos wide receiver room is deep, but at least they no longer have to worry about Noah Fant siphoning away targets. There will be plenty to go around in a revamped Denver offense, and Sutton and Judy are the two prime candidates to take advantage. 
as we get to the top three, I love me some Rashad Bateman. And Baltimore showed supreme confidence in him in the offseason. After letting Miles Boykin and Sammy Watkins walk in free agency, they also traded away Marquise Brown on the first night of the draft. With three wide receivers from last year removed from the roster, they did absolutely nothing to bolster the position. The rest of the remaining wide receiver room is unknown to be kind. Devin Duvernay has flashed in short spurts, but the number one receiver job here is Bateman's and it is not even close. With only Mark Andrews to contend with, Bateman is going to see well over 100 targets. And after showing some massive potential when healthy in 2021, he is going to explode onto the scene this year. The Ravens may run more than most owners will like, but when they go to the air, Bateman is going to be on the other side often. The upside here is massive and the breakout is written in stone. We are going wide receivers from here on out and in at two I have Gabriel Davis. And just like Bateman, the upside for Davis is astronomic. The Bills let Cole Beasley and Emmanuel Sanders go in free agency, which freed up 184 targets. With no real threat for the number two job to worry about, Gabe is going to be given every opportunity to snatch it for himself and claim a ton of those. Considering the nuke that he dropped on Kansas City in the playoffs, I think that he is more than ready for it. Davis scored nine times in the last seven games that he played last year, and he only saw double digit targets in two out of those games. With a more consistent, healthy target share, a top quarterback, and one of the league's best offenses, he has top 25 written all over him. Jump on the bandwagon now before we run out of room. It is already getting tight. At number one, it is none other than C.D. Lamb. And yes, I was a year early on the breakout, maybe. My brother's the prophet anyway, but there is no doubt that CeeDee Lamb blows up in 2022. Amari Cooper is gone, Zeke's knees are questionable, and Dak needs to win some big games that matter. He is going to be looking to Lamb to help him do so, and opportunity has been the only thing keeping CeeDee from a real spot amongst the elite at the position. He has the size, the strength, the smarts, the ball skills, and the speed to win all over the field. Dang, that is a lot of S's. With already 2,000 yards under his belt at the NFL level, the production has been there. Dallas was also the number one scoring offense in 2021, and if he gets 150 targets from a team that is scoring that much, you can forget about it. Lamb ends up in the top 10 at the position walking away. He has had the biggest value jump in the offseason. And that is how I kick off 2022 fantasy football content. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video today. I will be coming fast and furious with a whole lot more videos on fantasy football in the coming weeks. So keep your eyes peeled for those. If you haven't done it yet, if you're thinking about it, but just haven't hit that button, please, please, please consider giving me a like and a subscribe. The support that I get helps me out so very much. I greatly appreciate all of it. This is Relentless Press. I am your host, Abraham Opatz, and we will see you next time.